But in 2006, I was doing Jindabyne up in the Snowy Mountains. And on my days off, I went, you know, as you do, drive around and to the national parks. And I just fell in love with the landscape. And we went up to Mount Kosciuszko and um, we stood on the, on the top and I yelled out, uh, I think I'm coming back and it's gonna be to do with a movie. Uh, I think I'm gonna write it. I think I'm gonna be in it. And I think it's gonna be the drover's wife. <laughs> the drover's wife, The Legend of Molly Johnson, is about a mother's love and how women do what they do to make sure that their family are safe uh, and life, life continues basically, and her trials and tribulations set in 1893, a woman alone on her property, and um, trouble comes to her. My crime, missus, existing whilst black. That story, The Drover's Wife, from Henry Lawson's short story, Nine Pages, I was about five years old when my mum would read that to me and recite it to me. So that story's been with me for 45 years, and I think the reason why it's it stayed with me as, as a child. It was the first time I used my imagination, whether that was me um, moving into the performing arts world, but I could use my imagination and saw myself as that young boy in the story. My mum was the drover's wife. You ask a lot of questions. Mum says that too, but if you don't ask, you don't know, eh? With an adaptation, so we had the play, and I was also working on a novel and the screenplay. I really wanted to challenge myself and make sure that when you witnessed the three of those, you'd get a, um, a different experience. So the novel was more of a spiritual feeling when you read it. In regards to the theatre, it's all about the words and the space. And then for the film, I had the luxury of filling it with the landscape, which to, which to Aboriginal people is, is almost another protagonist. And it's based on sort of like a Dreamtime songline storyline that probably only Mob would see it, will get it when they see the film. When I bring back the story about the Bullock, that is very much a um, traditional aspect of Aboriginal storytelling of someone experiencing an event, someone witnessed it and the story's passed on and then that story's retold and that's how Blackfellas Cycle goes and it keeps everything alive. So it's a, so as with the Bullock, Molly experienced it, Danny witnessed it, he shared it with Yarika, Yarika developed it and then Danny retold it with his children. And my true love's here. Yeah, yeah. Being on location for majority of your film is a lot of hard work because you've got elements to deal with. But I never looked at anything as a challenge. It'll be, I said to a lot of people, it'll be a gift. And whatever nature throws at us will be, will be for the betterment of the film. And the heat at the very beginning of the shoot, we we're all in, oh, one day it was ridiculous, maybe nearly 30 degrees and I was in seven layers of winter clothes with a oil skin over me, you know what I mean? With a fire in a very small room. But that's, that's the industry and that's the challenges. When I was auditioning, I'm so proud to say that over 2,000 Indigenous young boys around the country or, you know, sent in their audition tapes for The Drover's Wife, 2,000. And Malachi pops up, number one, he's a red-headed black fella with freckles, love that, what a great look. And number two, he was a dancer. He just came in and blew it away in the audition. And I, I, didn't, I did nothing with that kid. If I'm being honest, I could say that I sat down and we had this deep and meaningful and I gave him all these acting lessons. I just told him to understand what he's saying. I said, be in the moment, mate. Just know what we're doing in the scene and just be truthful. And that's all I told him. And you know, after the second day, he goes, you know, he walks in, snaps his fingers and I go, calm down. <laughs> I think my biggest lesson as a director on this, on the, on the film, was to be a good leader and to, and, and to give your crew and cast a chance to have a voice. And the other thing was, it's okay to say sometimes, I don't know. Because there was a couple of days where I went, I'm not sure about this. Anyone got an idea? And I think it's, it's about not being so wound up with, with you worrying about whether you've got all the answers. And, and I think that was the biggest lesson to sit back and go, 
it's okay to not know. And I think it was really important that everyone felt valued. Yes, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. I hope that when the mob go and see it, that they feel really proud that this, this that it's theirs. It's, it's our storytelling in its truthfulness as well. So it's not just it's not just the surface element of great performance, good music, nice composition in a shot. This is deep ancient storytelling on just one one level. And then you've got and then you've got the elements of what the land provide. From that very first opening shot of that mist rising, that's all part of dreaming stories. That's what happens up there. When the mist rises, they come down from that mountain. That is true. That's culture and that's what I'm excited about. That other level to um, highlight and showcase that to the world in, in Indigenous storytelling. Mm -hmm.